drive. Yeah, quite long, but you know, I'm here. I'm here at last, <laughs> seeing your beautiful uh, face. Yeah, I mean, what, what, what are we supposed to be talking about anyway? Valentine's Day tomorrow. Let's do a Valentine's, Valentine's Day, Day webinar. webinar. Whoa! Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Why have I been viciously assaulted with this? Well, it's like a globe, a it's a world, 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 world radio. Of radios. World Radio Day? Whoa! <laughs> well, Pete, I guess we're chatting about World Radio Day 2023. Peace and love. Peace and love. Thanks for checking out Radio.co on YouTube. If you want to see more kit reviews, live webinars, and handy broadcasting tips, then give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and click the bell icon. Hi there, Phil here from Radio.co, and thank you very much for joining us for this very special webinar where we're kind of moving away from talking about bits of equipment, bits of software, as we all come together to rejoice about celebrating. Celebrating, in particular, World Radio Day. Um, now, this particular day offers people the opportunity to really come together and chat about probably the, one of the big things that we rank in particular very high on our all-time greatest hits lists, and that's radio. Um, now, it's not just me and my voice that you're going to be uh, seeing and droning on for quite a while. I'm actually joined by one of my fellow compadres and radio nerds, it's Pete. Hey Phil, how are you doing? Very good, thank you Pete. How are you? Yeah, good. I'm excited for today. It's one of my favourite days of the year, in fact. Is it really? Yeah, for my birthday, Christmas, World Radio Day. Excellent. You're not saying that just because you've got some roast into glasses on, are you? Well, Phil, <laughs> I am not indeed, but I will keep the glasses on for now so Excellent. we can uh, look at this through my special vision. And, I mean, uh, no one is doubting that you have an esteemed um, eye for fashion, but is there any particular reason why you do have some some tinted glasses on. It's not for an ironic joke, which I attempted. There's actually, uh, there's actually a theme that we are going for. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought I would leave you with your joke because oh, but, you know when you just let a joke just fall apart yeah. and it's more funny? That's what I thought I would do. I wouldn't say more funny, but it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's kind of radio. Is it, is it all right? You yeah, sometimes yeah. you do things on radio and they don't work, so you just keep going and try again. Yeah, it's a bit of live broadcasting, isn't it? Mm, so what I'll do is we'll let you do your joke a little later on and we'll see if it works then. Excellent. Uh, but for the time, Beard, yes, Pete. So you've got some some glasses on. We've got some. Uh, we've got some like kind of love hearts. We've got world, of course, a bit more obvious for World Radio Day. Yep. We've got um, this sort of flowery thing. flowery band. We've got a peace, peace sign. symbol. It's kind of giving it away. But uh, yeah, it's because the the theme of World Radio Day, which does take you know a, a particular theme or message, a bit like Eurovision. Um, this uh, year's edition is all centered around peace. Mm. So that's why we've gone for some. Uh, Albeit rather tacky decorations for it, but it's just to make the our space look a little um, little different. Um, but yeah, as I say, you know, me and Pete, we're going to be talking about World Radio Day as a whole. You know, about um, you know why it's a thing, the, the history behind it, but also be diving into the radio industry in general. You know, about uh, analysing sort of where it's been over the last particular you know few years, especially you know where it's going. Um, tips and, of course, on how you can launch your internet radio station with, with our help. Um, but then also answering a couple of questions that we posed. You know, again, we usually cover questions like, you know, what equipment do I need for my station? Let's talk about licensing. No, none of that today. We're going to be talking about things about radio and why we love it. So I've asked questions such as, what does radio mean to you? Um, what's your favourite thing about radio? Where do you see radio going, uh, you know, within the next few years? So they were questions that we posed um, earlier on in the week. So I am you're going to be covering those and reading out some of the answers that you've so generously um, donated to us. And, uh, you know, if you uh, had a, an answer to the question that we didn't get round to, then you can always get in touch with us uh, through the comments below, wherever you're watching this, or just send us an email via studio at radio.co. Um, so the first thing, obviously, as I say, we're talking about World Radio Day. Um, this could very well be the first time you're ever hearing it. Thinking, they have a special day, a world day at that, all about radio. Uh, well, the answer is yes. So, uh, Pete, what in the world is World Radio Day? Well, World Radio Day is kind of what it says, right? It's a day that the whole world celebrates radio. Excellent. So on to the next thing. We're yeah, going. On to the next topic of the video. <laughs> no, so it was officially recognised by UNESCO in 2011, mm -hmm. although it's been going for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Then a couple of years later, the, Nas uh, the United Nations General Assembly gave it their stamp of approval, which now means, right, it's in our calendars. And on the 13th of February every year, we celebrate World Radio Day. Yeah, so, so it's 13th of February every every year. Yeah, with a big stamp on it of approval. Excellent. So, you know, whereas, you know, you might go into your local supermarkets and, you know, of course, shelves around this time of year are usually stocked full of, you know, 
love hearts and mm. uh, bouquets of flowers and chocolates and things, glasses. roast and glasses, yep. or things like that. Maybe swap a few of those out and maybe put a few, you know, smart speakers in there or, you know, a microphone. You know, if you come out with a bouquet of Shure <laughs> SM7Bs, then, uh, hey, well, you've got more money than me. But also, you know, it's, it's, a, it's another reason to... If I was bought that for Valentine's Day, Phil, if I was bought a bouquet of microphones, I would be... Very pleased. Well, I'm married. That's, <laughs> You're married. That's all the problems in my life gone. A bunch of microphones. So, uh, yes, yeah, so, as I said, the, the theme behind um, the, 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 this year's is peace. Right? Yeah. So, uh, so where, where's, what's the, I guess, the inspiration behind that? Well, so the United Nations is all about peace, right? And mm. it's all about trying to celebrate peace around the world. So they do things... Around the world? Around the globe. So they do things which are meant to help peace. So this year, they've chosen Radio and Peace uh, in a response to the conflict in the world currently, Mm -hmm. be about the wars that are currently going on all over the world. And also, you know, the issues that lots of countries are facing at the moment, especially post-pandemic. So this year, they've gone all about peace and to celebrate it. Now, I think radio has quite a unique place in the peace world Mm. because... Radio can and has caused conflict, as we know, right? It's caused conflict in many areas. But I think 90% of radio is about peace. Be about whether it's just bringing your favourite music mm. or bring, be about if it's your only companion when you've got no one. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it can also just be uh, a bit of escapism, can't it be? Mm. So, you know, again, you know, the whole issues are all about peace and, you know, there's, there's, there's some awful things going around the world. But sometimes you turn on the radio and you've just got... A personality there just speaking you know addressing you playing music and stuff it is uh, you know peace can be achieved just from a, a peace of mind as well just taking you out of that, that current situation and i think it's that also it's the radio can go where no one else can go right so when we're at a country at war wherever that might be mm. the likelihood of you having lost your mobile signal tv signal any other signal is quite high due mm. to what happens where radio is pretty you know flexible it's pretty um durable so you're gonna get you're probably gonna be able to get radio quite easily and you mm. can get wind-up radios which require no power at all really so that might be your only thing right you might have lost everything and radio is just one of those things where you go wow this is my only companion in this war-torn world and this is keeping me happy yeah so i think the un choosing um and unesco choosing peace this year peace and radio radio mm. and peace is probably a really good angle to look where we are in radio at the moment yeah and i guess there's, there's the the idea of um uh, you know trying to dis- uh, extinguish conflict particularly as yeah. used there so you know like a quote here from from the reasoning behind it is uh, you know in reporting and informing the general public radio stations shape public opinion and frame a narrative that can influence domestic and international situations and decision making processes radio can indeed fuel conflict but in reality professional radio moderates conflict and or tensions preventing their escalation or bringing about uh, reconciliation and reconstruction talks yeah so uh, yeah the idea is yes you're so you know we can't deny that in the past that you know it has sparked um you know a conflict and distrust and you know of course you know it, it still can do that yeah. um but also there is just as much good as people see about or more good than you know in the way of just bringing people together and I can, yeah as i say just just trying to uh promote peace and um yeah. uh, i guess in terms of the landscape of the media what's What's going on? How is radio looking these yeah. days? Well, here in the UK, especially when we look at um, Radio and Edison, the two organisations that do research for us in the UK, currently 89% of adults listen to radio each week. Wow. So, yeah. you know, some people might say radio is dying. 89% of mm. adults. That's literally like if you had 10 friends, nearly, well, 8.9 of them <laughs> <laughs> listen to radio. One of the reasons is. Well, one of the reasons isn't it's working. Else, yeah. uh, and that's weekly hours of listens total up to 1.2 billion hours wow, a week yeah. of radio so like that's huge right yeah you, like, yeah think about this it's like wow this is huge and then when we look at like the uae for example in 2019 92 uh, percent of the population aged 10 and above tuned into radio every week mm. so it's like so even the younger generations in places like the uae are listening to radio yeah and, and a popular question people always ask me you know when they get in touch with with us at radio.co about you know launching a station one question i do get asked a lot is you know, I, I guess looking towards the future, I'm going to put so much time and effort into launching my own station, you know, is it still going to be around? Or, mm. you know, not so much 
is Radio.co going to be still around in the next few years? Of course, we hope so. Yeah. Um, in terms of, you know, the radio landscape, how is that looking? And, you know, one thing I always say is radio is, is not declining. Sure, methods of listening or methods of broadcasting are on the decline, but radio in general, sort of, you know, year on year, quarter on quarter, it's always on the rise just because there's, it's, it's a medium that just cannot be beaten or, or it can't be replicated. Yeah, sure, there's Spotify, you can listen to that and podcasting and stuff, but there's nothing quite like just a radio station, you know, it's and it's, there's so many core values to radio which just make it so special and so so passionate. Well, it's funny you talk about, the, what's the word? It's funny you talk about the mediums of listening to radio yeah. because I was just looking through some more research and in, in South Africa, uh, 64% of people listen to radio on their TV, which is like something you don't yeah. often think about, but... Uh, yeah, TV, computer, tablet, or smartphone in 2021, whereas in nine, uh, 2019 it was only 44%. Mm. So the mediums are changing, but it's increasing, right? So you know we've got another, well, another 20% in two years are now listening to radio on all these other devices. Yeah. So they might not be listening to an old traditional radio, but they're still listening to radio. You know, yeah. in fact, someone sat in front of their TV and went. I've got all these channels I can watch, but I'm going to switch to a radio channel yeah. and just watch a black screen whilst I sit here and listen to yeah. it. Yeah, and there's, there's a reason why people do that. It's, 100%. You know, and, you know, and again, different ways of, of, um, of listening to radio. Like one of the, if not, I think the most popular way people listen to radio these days, particularly in the, the UK, is through smart speakers. Mm-hmm. And smart speakers have almost replaced the old traditional wireless, you know, that might be in the corner of the room. It's a, sure, it's a speaker, but it's treated as a radio. And, and when something as compact and unnoticeable like a you know a, a, an echo device in the corner of your kitchen or something like that you turn it on and it's just on throughout the entire yeah. day and you know it follows you around you know, the, the volume sort of follows you around you can of course you know move it to other uh, rooms in the house and stuff but it's become such a convenient compact way of listening to radio that's so comfortable you just you know, you'll end up listening to it all day because it's so effortless to actually tune into it. Well, I think I saw that the digital listening was something like 670 million hours a week. Mm. So if we're talking about a billion hours of radio listened to every week and 670 million of those hours are digital. I think the smart speakers were like one of the huge driving factors mm. in that. And I know personally at home, I have radios in my house and I don't use them. I just yeah. use Alexa because it's easier, right? Yeah. I just, you know, a smart speaker. Um, I think the only time I'm listening to a radio which isn't on a smart speaker is when I'm in my car. Yeah. It's so because I can't. If, if a smart speaker was in my car, I'd be using that. Yeah. So I think they're a huge success. And they've and we've seen it on our platform, right? We've mm. seen our clients grow hugely via smart speakers. And we, you know, we've seen clients do really well in that kind of new era of radio. Yeah, and you're saying about cars and stuff. I mean, I get that's probably one of the main driving factors, uh, pardon the pun, of why, <laughs> hey. of why people are... Uh, you know, so radio is still continuing to grow and be incredibly popular is because of cars. You know, a lot of car manufacturers still to this day in 2023 are putting a lot of effort in to make sure those radios work. It doesn't matter if it's a, uh, you know, a, an FM receiver yeah. or it's, it's just a way to tune into, you know, tune in or DAB or something like that. It's the it's such a valuable piece of equipment in a you know in a car that that's why radio continues to thrive because car manufacturers are still putting a lot of time and effort in making sure those uh, those radios work and they're hot and you know so it's um, you know as long as car radios exist there is no signs of radio ever sort of uh, you know diminishing and things no, like that not in our lifetime no. Um, but yeah, and again, other sort of facts around the world, um, you know, we mentioned things, you know, like New Zealand and the US. I mean, in the US as well, 80% of American adults listen to radio in their car yeah. weekly, obviously just talking about cars. So when you think of how many, I mean, okay, I probably should have got more figures, but when you think of how many, you know, American adults there are in the world, 80% of them, you know, so millions upon millions upon millions are listening to it every week in their, you know, in their cars. Uh, in Europe, the top five public service media genres are music, yeah. you know, I guess, sort of um, escapism, news and current affairs, regional and local programming, entertainment, and factual. And I think um, whilst I've got my rose tinted glasses back on again, I was really interested by this fact from Australia, from some Edison research we did, or they did, <laughs> and, we took, <laughs> and we took the data. Seventy uh, percent of the adult population in Australia listen to online radio. Yeah. Now that's like so they're not listening to traditional radio; they're listening to online radio, online, right? Seventy yeah. percent. That's huge. Yeah. It's like for a company like ours, and we often get people ask us, don't we? Like. 
oh, but you know, I, I can't get like some in the UK, we're not getting any FM licenses anymore. Mm. And it's um, small scale DAB, which we'll talk about, I'm sure. Um, what do we do? And we're like, well, online's great. Well, this 70% of the enti- Australia, you know, well, wherever Australia is on my globe, I'm not very good at geography, but um, 70% of the entire country listen to online radio. Mm. That's an amazing fact, and I was really surprised by that. Yeah, because, um, you know, again, we always say from a creator's point of view, online radio is so beneficial because it is cheap to run, it's easy to set easy, up. Easy, yeah. Sure, you know, like anything, you know, in a saturated market like podcasting and YouTube channels, it's difficult to promote and market. But the idea is that you, um, you know, it, it, it's there's more avenues for people to be listening to your station, for you to promote it, to market it, to, to, to run it, it's cheaper and easier. Uh, but also from a listener's perspective, there are so many ways people can listen from their phones, smart speakers, computers, um, you know, and as the technology grows, they'll always find ways to incorporate radio into it. I mean, I don't know how much use radio in VR is, but, you know, um, it's, it'll be a thing that will be possible. You know, you're playing a, I don't know, a game on a VR yeah. headset, funnel some radio into it while you're doing it, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, Future of Cars, we know, is still, still running strong when it comes to radio. So it's radio is so accessible from both a creator's perspective and also an audience's, and that's why it's thriving. You know, you've got numbers like that thing in one you know, particular country like that where everyone is absorbing themselves within online audio. Yeah, it's massive, um, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited about it today. I think it's a great day, and uh, just getting to read stats like this is pre- kind of reignites my passion yeah, and it, my yeah. Uh, yeah, my love for radio. Yeah, it shows that you know, even you know, um, as, as, you know, as we go get more cynical, and you know, the world is going to pot around. Yeah. You know, we can still we still sort of really nerd out when it comes to to radio because it is such a wonderful medium. You can put I mean, your glasses on <laughs> and uh, sit back and uh, listen to radio. <laughs> mm. We mentioned about DAB. Yes, it's good to know. I guess the future of radio, and, and I guess technology wise, um, audio method listening wise, not really a phrase. Um, you know where it's going, and I guess small scale DAB is something that is uh, I guess, well, growing a lot more, isn't it? Particularly in the UK. In the UK, yeah. So other countries have done like kind of low power DAB trials and so on, and they're doing really well. Um, I, yeah, some, some countries are doing amazing. Like, some are way ahead of where we are in the UK with this. But in the UK, we're, uh, we're doing what we call small scale DAB, which is basically digital radio on a smaller scale, a cheaper scale. Mm. So these small local stations, stations, um, you know, like your local community stations and so on, can now set up digital radio, but without it costing thousands of pounds a month, it's more affordable. Uh, Ofcom, which is our regulator here in the UK, they're now onto their fifth, li- uh, fifth round of licensing. So, you know, they've done a bunch of licenses and uh, I was looking the other day, a bunch of those are already on air. So those stations mm. have like, they've won the license, they won their bid, they've launched a station and now they're on air. Yeah. And I live in an area which has two of those, two uh, small scale licenses. And it's great because suddenly from living in the middle of nowhere where I could only pick up the national stations, I can now pick up all my local stations mm. wherever I am in this local area. Sounds great, doesn't drop out. And it's just a reason to listen to them. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think all these countries which are doing these whole, you know, the low power, the small scale DAB kind of vibes, it's going to be a really interesting time. Some say, is it a bit too late? Mm-hmm. Should this have been done 10 years ago? Um, others say, well, keep giving FM licenses out yeah. because FM works, right? Mm-hmm. As we know. Um, but there has to be a point in time where you need to move on to the future and FM is expensive, and uh, you know, as, as we know, that's a massive um, block, isn't it? To yeah. clients who struggle to get on, it's a cost. So doing things like digital radio, using things like internet radio, using things like all the digital platforms like Alexa and TuneIn and all of these, I think it's a great, um, yeah, I think it's a great, we're in a great angle for you as a station. If I was starting a station now, you know, when if I start station 10 years ago, I might have worried if I can get an FM license. Yeah. Because is it really radio if I'm not on the FM? <laughs> you know, if yeah. I'm not on the radio waves, am I actually doing radio? Yeah. Now, thinking about getting an FM license and how much that costs would not even come into my yeah. mind. I'd be like, well, just focus online, focus on digital. 
and crack on with it. Yeah, I mean, of course, you know, DAB still, you know, st even small scale still, still have a, a cost attached, you know, comparing to internet yeah. radio, you know, the, the very least you need is, we would say, a computer and an internet connection, you're good to go. Yeah. Um, and that's and that's essentially, but, you know, if you do want to grow and, I guess, feel like you're kind of, I guess, legitimizing yourself a little bit more and you wanted to expand from internet radio to DAB, you know, you can do that. I mean, when it comes to that, you have to, you know, do all the, the work and effort into securing licensing. the DAB licensing yeah. and such. But if you started out as a radio.co internet radio station, you know, in the future, there's nothing stopping you, aside from, I guess, costs and time and effort, you know, mm. get, getting a bid for a license. But, you know, it is possible to to um, become a DAB station. And there are a number of clients of ours who have been an internet radio station for a short spell, and now they're broadcasting simultaneously across purely the internet and across DAB as well. I would say, and without trying to be a salesperson, because you know what they're like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> without trying to be a salesperson, like using a platform, let's just say ours, for yeah. example, but it could be anything, but it should be ours because why not? Um, using a platform like radio.co, you could get on DAB or small scale DAB without needing extra equipment, right? Mm. Because a lot of these people can just take a web stream and transmit to that. So whilst there are some more costs, it's not scary. Like no. you can still set up a Radio.co account, give a link to your provider, and get on the air quite easily mm. if costs are a limiting factor. Yep. And also time, right? Who has time nowadays to build an entire radio station? Whereas setting up, a, you know, as an account and playing some playlists on there, takes, you know, well maybe. You give them a demo feel. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you give a great demo and they're on like that in no time. So, yeah, I just wanted to care for like that. Like, I think sometimes people get worried about that mm. and they get scared about the work, the money and the blocks involved in all of this. Because when you first look at these lists, you're like, mm. oh, my goodness, that's a lot of work. It's actually not. No, no. A no. little bit of time, a little bit of money and you're done. Yeah, and you know, if radio is something you've been aspiring to do for so long and it's been a dream and you're just looking to take the plunge, just take like numbers that, you know, you might get quoted for things like your internet radio platform, like, you, you know, your radio.co subscription, equipment you may want to get, licensing if it's necessary, and compare that to the costs involved in launching an FM station, for <laughs> example, you know, you'd, you know, take that internet radio figure, add, what, at least two more zeros to the end of it, yeah, something yeah. like that. And yeah. You know, it's you know, it's it's nothing in, in comparison. So, uh, and like I said, you know, internet radio, the beauty of it, it's just so accessible. It's available twenty four seven worldwide. You know, and it's just a case of you know taking the plunge with it. And we've touched on it a little bit there, people. You know, about the the future. We said you know, the, you know, small scale DAB, particularly in the UK, is a is a big thing. I mean, are there any other trends that have been steadily increasing, or new things that you know that might come into play in terms of where radio is? going to go past look and sound like yeah i think it's hard sometimes because some countries are so far ahead and some are so far behind right you know um when you look at radio in america it's such a different culture and uh way different outlook than it is in the uk mm. um some could say they're behind but others might say well this is the perfect medium of the mm. happy medium right i think am in the uk is being it is being drowned out. Yeah. You know, recently in the UK, we had some big, um, some of the big broadcasters finally, after so long, shut down the AM um, transmissions mm. of their stations. And uh, yeah, they worked out a percent and it was like, you know, a tiny percent of audience listened by AM. Then that's still, that's still people who now can't listen to radio. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So there is still that factor. Uh, there's talk of FM shutting down. I personally don't think it's going to happen in the next 20 years mm. because of where we are. But as we know in the UK, for example, and this has happened in other countries, FM licenses aren't being given out. So yeah, it's not being shut down, but it's, it's like not being It's like an exclusive grown. club, isn't it? Yeah, it's a club, yeah. and if you're not in the club, you're not in the club, you're not coming in. Yeah. It's like the club you went to the other night, and they were like, you're not in this club, Phil. You can't come in. So uh, you didn't have my special glasses <laughs> to get it. into that club. You didn't have pass. <laughs> you didn't have your pass. And I also think um, brands and companies are starting to cater for audience on like mm. different platforms. So it'd be about social platforms, like what we're doing now, video, YouTube, um, and so on. I think that is also another future for radio, mm. right? We've done a video about um, using radio and video before and so on. It's a great avenue. Mm. It fits. It's not a replacement. It fits no, with your radio, right? Yeah, the, the purpose it's, of it is, you know, you're not creating or streaming programs mm. on YouTube because that's 
the best medium for it. It's absolutely not true. But what you're doing is there are audiences who only dwell within YouTube content or yeah. um, you know, there are only people who only exist within Spotify. So the way that you attract someone on YouTube is you stream some content or make some pre-recorded content available on, uh, on YouTube. And the way you get people on Spotify and Apple Podcasts is by converting some of your you know, programs or your talk shows and making them available on demand as well, not instead of. So, um, yeah, it's just there's, there's so many more avenues and ways to capitalize on audiences and using social platforms and, and video services are ways just to make it easier for people to stumble upon your station and by attracting people who are, I guess, audiences that are quite stubborn and I said they'll only dwell within YouTube and, and things like that. I think on that note of attracting people and getting your audiences across, in the UK, and this is very much UK because this is where what I listen to, for, for example, but this has happened in other countries. We saw a decline in local radio. Yeah, a few years back, we saw lots of local radio stations shut down. Mm. And then last year, we did a webinar all about community and local radio, didn't we? Um, actually, the comments on that were like, wow, these people love local radio. <laughs> um, and now we're starting to see local radio be about using like the technologies you've talked about, mm. YouTube, online, uh, Radio.co, small-scale DAB, and so on. It's almost, I don't want to, like, tempt fate, but touching wood or touch my globe, yeah. and um, <laughs> and re- local radio seems to be coming back. Yeah, like, yeah. It almost, I'm driving around Manchester where we are right now, there's a bunch of local radio stations, yeah, and it's yeah. like, wow, this technology, people have used the technology for its best and went, you know what we need is local radio. Yeah, because it, it comes back to again reasons why people love radio. You know, what, 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 you know, what, why am I mm. listening to it? You know, it's all well and good. Uh, you know, a, a, a network, a company saying it's all right. Well, you know, we can save a lot of costs and a lot of time if we're just doing one station, distributing it everywhere. Now that's great. People are still all over the world hearing a fantastically well-produced, great radio show. Yeah. But what's the point of you know tuning into you know your you know, wanted to tune into your local area and just hearing stuff that's going on in London or, or you know, you know, you might hear that your local news, but you're not going to hear presenters know more about where you live and, you know, uh, appeal to local businesses and things. Mm. So, yeah, people are almost kind of biting back, aren't they? They're like, well, there is an importance in local content, you know, and it doesn't matter if t- 20 people are going to be listening to your local radio station. There are 20 people who have chosen to listen to your station specifically because of maybe, um, you know, what you stand for, what you are talking about, you know, yeah. just you being a local personality. So, yeah, local radio, I, you know, definitely is making some form of a comeback. You know, it's not going to be, it's not going to skyrocket in numbers overnight. You know, it's going to take a bit of building up, but there has been a bit of bit of resistance, a bit of a fight back, a bit of a conflict in a way of, you know, yeah. of people want to, you know, standing up for what they love specifically about radio, which is sometimes local content local hosts local news local laughs you know, local yeah, topics local and things you voices know? local yeah. accents like you know people want that sometimes yeah. and uh i'm really excited to see where the future goes um i think the future for radio you know what the figures earlier like 89 percent still in the uk still listen to radio yeah. like the future is not ending. No. Radio, World Radio Day is going to be celebrating radio for the rest of our lives, mm. and if not, long, long more. Yeah, yeah. It's just, I say, it just comes down to the different ways people are listening to radio, and uh, you know. But it still remains the, the core values that we listen to radio because we we love it, and you know, if it's local, a lot of people are more appealed to that. So definitely in regards to the future, we've already seen some sort of resurgence in it. But yeah, there is going to be a bit of a comeback for. Uh, local radio after a few trepidatious years where it has been taken away, again, yep. particularly here in the um, in the UK. Um, and something just going back to the previous point about video content, social media platforms. Me and Rowan discussed this in our um, uh, our video uh, centered uh, webinar about you know why you should incorporate video into your radio station. And you know some of that we discussed about platforms like TikTok and Instagram, amongst others. Um, and you know, if you are a radio person, I mean, me, you know, you know, I'm in my 30s, but I couldn't honestly tell you how TikTok works. I couldn't tell you how Instagram works because I'm not really a social media person. I'm not really mm. on it. 
Social media is incredibly beneficial, despite my cynicism. It's incredibly <laughs> beneficial for, for a, a, an audio platform because you need to create almost a bit of a visual identity for it. You need to signpost your radio station. Yeah. Um, so if you've got absolutely no clue on how Instagram or TikTok works, find out, you know, because there are audiences on there. There are, you know, you can grow yourself as a local radio personality by doing a few little posts, you know, about, you know, uh, about maybe what you're playing or doing. So, you know, it's just a way of making the most of all these platforms that are available to you. You don't need to go wild and do no. TikToks every hour. You're just something regular, once a day, something like that. And so, yeah, use social media, particularly video-based platforms, um, to really just expand the reach and uh, broaden the horizons of your radio station. You know, Phil, I have to admit something, and I'll put my special glasses on for this because it's like, uh, this is my, like... This is the fake me, right? So <laughs> no one knows who I am with this these guys. This is the character on. of me. Yeah, this is the character. But I may have opened up TikTok last night and spent probably half an hour watching someone do a radio show on TikTok. They were doing a radio show. They were talking into the mic, playing music. They were doing a radio show. They were yeah. doing something I've done for 15 years. And I sat there for half an hour watching it. Do you know how many people are watching that stream? How? Uh, guess how many? Oh, uh, a thousand. No, seven thousand people. Wow! And the comments were going crazy, and it's just this like young person doing a radio show, playing music, doing radio, mm. and like these people were loving it. Oh, play me this song! I'm like, this is the most engaged I've ever seen people involved in radio. Yeah, yeah. So I know you know you won't use TikTok. And uh, I'm sure uh, our social team at Radio.co will be constantly trying to get you to get on TikTok. But it's a real powerful media. Yeah, and like, yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's a weird thing to say this, but radio is almost... It, it's it's it was obviously considered old school. That's why a lot of people did podcasting because it's a bit it's different. But now every man and his dog's got a podcast. Yes. So people are now thinking of hey, radio is a bit <laughs> unsung now. Let's <laughs> let's start radio. So there's now a transition where people are not looking to launch a uh, a podcast and looking to launch a radio station or, or a live version of that podcast because radio is now a bit more of a um, diluted. Uh, uh, market now, you know, so people are moving over to radio. It's weird to say that radio is like the new kid on the block, mm. almost. It's a bit really strange, but yeah, all in all, it comes down to it's, it's a very exciting future. Uh, lots of prospects ahead of us when it comes to the growth of um, of radio. Now, again, touching on that one. One sort of frequent misconception that I do get a lot of people when I am, um, you know, chatting to people as, as I do most days of the week about, you know, radio, you know, why we love it, why we should be doing it, you know, similar to what we're doing here. And one thing that people always ask me is, you know, it's like radio, it's, it's just playing music, is it? Mm. Well, you know, why should I do that? Or, um, you know, why should I do a radio or why should I do a podcast? And if there's anything that the the the, uh, the coronavirus you know, pandemic sort of taught us, um, particularly within this industry, is that radio has never been more important, or rather the, 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 the broadcasting platform has never been more important. Um, and the one thing to come out of that is that radio in particular is so incredibly versatile um, that it can be used in so, so many different ways. I mean, uh, off the bat, Pete, I mean, your particular thoughts on this from someone who has been in the industry for, you know, for so long and you've seen it grow quite exponentially within the last, say, sort of 15 or so mm. years. What impact has COVID in particular made to the, the, the radio industry? I think COVID did that thing you talked about where people went, Everyone does a podcast. And in COVID time, everyone did a podcast. Mm. And they're like, oh, this radio sounds new and exciting. <laughs> Let's do this. And, you know, we had that person where you said you often get asked, well, it's just music, right? Yeah. Why should people listen to me play music? It's not at all what radio is. And now we've seen since COVID, yeah, even just on our platform, we've seen clients like Cybercar Radio, the radio station called Relax My Dog, mm. which I don't know if you can guess by the name, Phil, but it's all about relaxing your dog. Yeah. Which on fire at night is an amazing, like thousands of listeners. There are, of, there is, it's like, a very popular it's station. Huge. Yeah. You know, the idea behind that is, you know, and I guess uh, it was more, more in line of, you know, bef before the lockdown, you know, it's the idea is you leave this radio station on for your pets who are remaining yeah. at home, specifically your dogs, I guess, um, you know, to, uh, you know, ease any anxieties and things. But, you know, that's still very much still during that, Time, it's still an incredibly popular station so it's different ways of using the platform you know we're not catering just for 
humans were catering for our other furry friends in our lives as well. Yeah, and I, I think, so I think to answer your question, what COVID especially taught us and what we're seeing in radio now is radio is just this really uh, versatile product which you can do anything. Mm. Yes, you can play your chart hitting music. Yes, you can do a TikTok show to 7,000 people asking you to play Barbie Girl. Or you can do a show dedicated to talking about cybercrime, or you can do a show dedicated to talking about your local flower show. Mm. Whatever it is, you can do whatever you want. Um, almost the more niche you go, the better, in a sense, because there will be an audience for yep. that, because they're under surf, right? There won't be, you know, like cybercrime radio. I don't know many other stations doing what they're doing. Mm. So, and, 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 we, and we saw in lockdown, you know, multiple genres start with us, didn't they? Yeah, like, I kind of like trying to categorise, mm. I guess, the most popular sorts of stations that did spring up, you know, from, you know, you know 2020 and, you know, it's still, still pretty relevant now. So, so um, correct me if any of these categories are wrong, but I think they're pretty accurate. So sort of things that we bore witness to, um, you know, the, well, I mean, for start, everyone at home, everyone's struggling for something to do, but there are different ways, different approaches they took with radio. So the first one, a bit more of an obvious one was, I guess, house party stations. Yeah. Almost like a silent disco. It's just only you in the room and the other people in their rooms and their houses. But, you know, we had radio stations that we had. Lockdown radio was one, yeah. COVID party radio. <laughs> Um, but really just the inspiration behind it was ways of bringing people together to enjoy the same music and interact with each other, you know, so you can text the host that you're listening to. So again, almost like you're listening to a Spotify playlist, but the host can talk to you in a way yeah. that they're responding to you. And people loved that. I mean, it, and it, even if it only li existed for a weekend, what an awesome weekend, you know, those people had. They, they served a purpose, which was to you know, again, alleviate anxiety and just entertain people in a way that, you know, is can only be done during this particular time. Well, and you bring those people together, don't you, right? So, you know, suddenly a thousand people, wherever it is, um, are at their home on their own, all listening to the same radio station, all texting the host, and it's that host is now... So not only is that radio station helping the people, but they're also helping themselves, mm. because now the host has someone to talk to. It has a thousand friends to listen to them talk. Um, and the other, we saw other categories like community radio, didn't we? Mm -hmm. We've talked about community radio a lot on this <laughs> YouTube channel. For like, it's always a thing I drone on about because I'm <laughs> like such a big believer in it. But in lockdown, especially community radio, played such an important part in keeping. It took on like a different today. form in a way to to what it's, I guess, traditionally yeah, known as community. Radio. I think it went from more like entertainment for your community to more like information for your community right mm. so you know um the station i'm involved in took on a very like whilst a lot of it was still right we want you know radio workers were key workers in the uk and i know other countries radio people were classed as like you know the people who wouldn't didn't have to stay at home they mm. could go to work because their job was vital mm. which at first people laughed at radio isn't vital it's like, oh, well, actually, what you're doing is vital. Mm. Um, so, like, we took on a thing of, right, okay, so we still want to entertain people, but we need to be doing this local news more than ever now. We need mm. to be, you know, updating. When the vaccine stuff came out, okay, we need to be telling people where it is. We mm. need to be giving people information on it so they can make a choice, yes or no. Um, and we need to give them that local information. Because yeah. there's something about watching it on your national news, but hearing it from the person down the road... You know, who, who sounds the same as you, mm. who is from where you're from, telling you, oh, yeah, just let you know, up the road, there's a new vaccine centre opened, you know. Um, and I think without that, lockdown would have felt much more lonely. Yeah, yeah. It, it became almost like a, a news bulletin, like a, a community bulletin board. Yeah, a, yeah. A, as, a, as a radio station. Yeah, you walk up to the shops, wouldn't you? And there's an information board. Well, you're not allowed to go to the shops. Yeah. So how do you get that information board? You know, they're not so much interested in broadcasting news of the wider world, just specifically with this little community, you know, who's, um, you know, who's, you know, um, any news involving any, any particular people or say yeah. vaccine centres opening up or uh, the best times to go down to a shop or I mean, a local shopkeeper might say, yeah. um, you know, well, you know, if you're in need of, don't want to say toilet roll, but that was one thing people were at, you know, things like, well, we've got some in, you know. So it was just basically a way to distribute, like, news you'd find in a local community pamphlet as a radio station. And that was, sometimes, in some cases, that was the job those stations, those community stations, purely took just an informational forum, you know, inviting people to 
update other listeners about how they're getting on and you know to hear news about how some of their neighbors are getting on because you know we were we were trapped in our homes and you know it was, it was a again a very sort of like key worker-esque um, uh, job role and i think on the key worker note that ties into another category we saw on our platform which is radio uh, relief radio for key mm. workers right stations dedicated for key workers now a lot there are a lot of key workers out there um, across the world and they're still doing amazing jobs mm. now be that in your health system or your education system um, I think we saw a few radio stations pop up in the UK saw a few in the US as well where they were dedicated and they were actually run by fellow key workers mm. who understood the stress that key workers went through now technically radio people were key workers and we carried on working <laughs> and but I won't say I didn't have a stressful time, right? <laughs> it was quite fun um, for me. Uh, but for, if you work in the healthcare system or you work in the education system, it was a very stressful time. Yep. So having these radio stations pop up, it aimed at the, you know, the key workers to help them and bring them together, right? Mm. So if you've got a station ed- dedicated to, I don't know, let's say the medical industry and it's got some medical people running it, mm. they know the stress you're going through. They know what you need. And once again, it's bringing them up after work normally, you might go down to your local you know, entertainment center mm. and uh, grab a drink or chat with people and talk about your day. We well, you couldn't do that in yep. lockdown, could you? You left work and you went home. So having a station where you could all just like, text in or email in, it was just a way for them to get relief. And, yeah, uh, yeah, and it was just a way to, I guess, these people are doing incredibly busy, stressful lives. It's, a, again, just a bit of relief for them. Mm. I mean, one, one popular trend, you know, we still get it, it's still very popular, but it was a bit more prolific during this uh, particular time is, um, you know, we had a lot of American clients who were launching stations for their delivery drivers, you know, truckers yes. in, in particular, you know, these people who were on the road. I mean, you know, they were on the road, you know, 12 hours a day or something like that, you know, regardless of whether, uh, you know, COVID was in action or not. But, you know, they, they it's like they took an extra bit of... Um, can they were like oh oh wow yeah what they are doing is an incredibly yeah. uh, uh, stressful job so let's do a state do a station that uh, you know and we saw this trend a lot they were doing stations where they were again distributing information what was going on in the company so even though they were on the road 12 hours a day they were still very much involved in the latest developments of the company they knew how everyone was getting on but they were playing music and content specifically for these drivers you know yeah. So again, relief radio, we, we classed it as, you know, for um, key workers to kind of fill part of their radio community with, not in jokes, but you know, like just, just th- things that they understand. It's done by people who, who know what they're going through. And also just a way to, I guess, almost give gratitude and thanks to, you know, people mm. on the road and doing very, very busy jobs. And I guess, you know, one of the last ones uh, from our major categories, although the list is endless, isn't mm. it? And I'm sure when you're watching this, you're like, yeah, but don't forget this. Um, as we always do. I'm, always, I'm that person in the comments being like, ah, excuse me, I think you're fine. Um, it was the, like, the why not categories. Yeah. All the people who got in touch with you who have been like, well, I've always wanted to give presenting or DJing or talking about a subject a go. I'm stuck at home. You know, I'm working from home or whatever it is. Mm. Why not give it a go and why not start a station? And we're still seeing that now. A like, lot, of people, a lot. Yeah, a lot of people who launch stations just on the on the hell of oh heck, why not? You yeah. know, I've I did DJing when I was in college. That was 20 years ago. Uh, I've, something I've always wanted to do, but I never had the time. Now I've got the time. How to do it? And there are people that are still doing it. You know, it's not their main job, of course. It's just a hobby, but it's a hobby they they were due to the circumstances they were actually allowed to follow through with and they they love it you know so that's why class is why not Ray? i mean why not now is the perfect time to to, to give it a go yeah i was just sorry <laughs> inopportune time to ask you a point while you're having a drink yeah no uh, all this talk about radio if it was making me thirsty um <laughs> i get excited about radio as we both do yep. um and today is just one of those days so yeah uh, it's really good um and i'm really uh adequate I'm really excited that that trend carried on. Yeah, yeah. I'm really excited, yeah. like, the why not of, of us all carried on after lockdown, and people are back to their day jobs now, and they've been like, oh, this radio stuff's fun, it could be my job. Yeah, So let's yeah. focus on that. And again, you've got to think, you know, if you did launch a station two years ago, you know, during, you know, the, the start of it, and you're still going on, you know, or, or even if, you know, it, it didn't, um, you know, it didn't last that long, there are still people who chose to listen to your station, and even now, two years later, people are still listening to these still, pop-up yeah. stations, you know, that are a bit more permanent. and Pop-up, but yeah. two years later, they're still on the air. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's, it's very, very heartwarming that, you know, 
I really don't want to toot our own holes, but obviously our <laughs> platform allowed people to, um, to to launch their own stations. We saw um, an astronomical Huge. rise in interest you know, of just, uh, again, a lot of why nots. I want to do this. A lot of relief, you know, I want to give my thanks to this. And, um, you know, our platform and our team, we were able to help people relive that. And it's, it's heartwarming that we were able to give people that opportunity and that people are, st- are still doing it, you know. Ooh. Good grief, shaking the world. Uh, we rocked the world. We, 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 we rocked, rocked the world. The world. Uh, oh, and we still do, Phil. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> moving on. Um, but yeah, so, so you know, in, in, you know, casting our minds back to not too far ago time of COVID, you know, that radio has changed. Radio has become more essential. Or rather, we've, it's become more noticeable. That yeah. it's essential. One hundred percent. And you know, we, we, you know, we've been working again in the industry. P. I, I think there's been a lot more of a, in these last few years, a lot more of appreciation for for, for radio, and and um, I say more of a need for it. As I say again, way more appreciation, way more need for it. Communities, be that local, national, worldwide, wherever you are in this amazing globe, need radio. Mm. And so, if you're watching this and you do radio awesome you know pat on the head to you uh, if you're not if you are watching this if you're not watching this you're not watching this but you're wrong <laughs> if you're watching this and you don't do radio and you think oh maybe i do maybe i need to start my station talking about the local flower shop yeah then start it and you yeah. will get an audience and people will listen to you yeah you know you're not necessarily going to see you know a gargantuan numbers of people no. listening, you know. But it, you know, if you if you're just entertaining just a handful of people, you're you're providing a service to people that people have chosen to listen to you and stick around. Even if it's friends or family, they mm. could literally listen and do whatever anything else, you know. But you know, the difference between listening to a Spotify playlist and a radio is that Spotify, you know, you might spend time deciding what you're going to listen to, but it's very impersonal. Sure, you might have made a personal playlist, but it's just one track over to the next. Radio is a very personal medium where it is people have spent time, um, you know, uh, creating a playlist for a particular mood or a time of day. You know, even if it's just similar tracks on rotation, effort's gone into making something that is going to be great all round, you know, and appeal to you and all the programmes and hosts are asking about you. How are you doing? You should get in touch. And, yeah. you know, it's, that's, that's the difference. And people have chosen to listen to your radio station because of that. I do think there's one last thing before we move on, just to clarify. If you only get 20 listeners, if you're able to um, justify and uh, afford the spend that it takes, you know, on platforms, wherever, us or whatever it is, if you're able to justify that spend to those 20 listeners, then it's worth it. Yeah. Because... If you've got 20 listeners, it means those 20 listeners didn't have anything to listen to or anyone to talk to, right? So if you can justify the spend, don't worry about the number. The numbers is nothing. Mm. Two people are listening as well. You're helping two people. Yeah. And you're, you know, when we talk, you know, on this day, when we talk about radio and peace, as it were, for this year's theme of World Radio Day, helping two people, yeah. bringing those two people peace, happiness, companionship, is more important than anything. Yeah. So I wouldn't, you know, I personally, when people ask me, um, how do I get more listeners? How do I grow this? How do I do this? I'm like, the first question is why? Why do you want more listeners? Is it to get advertising? Okay, well, that's another question mm. to do with how you fund your project. Is it just because you want more people to listen to what you're doing? That's fine. We all want more people to listen, don't we? We all mm. want more people to watch what we're doing, to listen to what we're doing. But is it important? Yeah. No, we're always like, you know, um, this is quite a UK thing, but Terry Rogan, one of the, probably, I would say one of the the legends from the UK radio, um, yeah, the radio sphere, and, uh, you know, when we look at people in the US, like Howard Stern and so on, they talk about talking to one person, right? This is what you're taught in radio school, aren't you? Always talk to one person, and you laugh at it at the time, because you're like, yeah, but (laughs) it's not one person listening. But when you actually think about it, yeah, that's right. Because when I listen to the radio, I'm not listening for the 7 million people listening. Mm. I'm listening for myself. Yeah. So I want to hear Phil talk to me about what I want to hear. Yeah. And not it's, like, oh, I'm just one of 7 million people getting talked yeah. to by Phil. And it's a medium that no one uh, that can't do that. So, you know, ra- you know TV, you're not going to watch a drama and, you know, the lead actor's going to come in and go, you're right. You're right, Pete. Everything fine. Yeah. Right, okay. Just, just checking. Right. Just checking you're good. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, you know, you know, if, fair enough, you know, you can watch in a news programme, you know, they're, they're not going to say, sit down, it's, it's a bit of a rocket yeah. report. Yeah, they're not going to be like, take a minute, Phil, and sit down. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, and you know, podcasting. And I guess the aim with pod- podcasting has got a bit of a an egotistical um, mm. aim, really. Like you know, I, you know, I, you know, I've launched podcasts before. You know, still podcast quite regularly. But the aim is, I want to launch podcasts, and I want people to listen to it. I want people to, lots of people to leave reviews and yeah. it, to go up charts and stuff. So you are constantly trying to address people as many people as possible. Like, hey guys, thanks for checking out. Oh, it'd be really great if all of you could, you know. Whereas radio is, thanks for listening. Um, you know, how are you doing today? Uh, no, uh, have you got any funny jokes about X, Y, and Z? It's a very personal thing. And you know, I feel like, you know, presenters that don't stick to that are ones that I instantly dislike because it, it's radio has to be a personal experience because after all, it's why people are choosing to listen to it. It's just to feel like you're in a conversation or you're in a room with, with somebody. And talking about being in a room, Phil, I'm in a room with you now, yep. but people watching aren't. Sadly, maybe, luckily. Um, if someone wants to start a radio station or wants advice and so on, mm. how do, you, from you personally, because you know, who wouldn't want Phil to give you advice? Uh, how do people go about that without tooting your own horn again? But how do people get to listen to your advice and so yeah. on? Yeah, well, I mean, we, you know, I always sort of ask people to, uh, you know, to book demos with us. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can visit our website or radio.co forward slash demo. Um, we book it a little time. So, I mean, of course, yeah, ultimately we're going to be discussing about how, the, how our radio.co platform works and stuff. But really, it's just a chance for me to hear about your plans or any questions or concerns. You know, for that entire, like, 30-minute call, I don't even need to show you the platform if that's not what you want. If you just want 30 minutes to talk about the ideas that you've had, maybe the ideas that have been bubbling away for years, and you just want me to tell you whether they're not crazy, or maybe if it is what you want, that they are crazy and that you should absolutely jump in and do it. You know, that's, that, that's you know, and you can always send an email as well, but if you just want to have a little chat about radio, whether it's something, you know, this crazy idea you've had, whether it's something you should go and do. I mean, spoiler alert, I'm always going to say yes, because obviously, you know, yeah. it doesn't matter how mad your idea is. If it's if you're passionate about radio, then do it. There are a lot of people do who don't get the chance to be able to express something that they're passionate about. And if radio is, it's so easy to do. Um, and, you know, I did the, the last webinar I did around, around Christmas. The ducks. The ducks, all about the ducks. So I did about the ducks, Sorry. which was... <laughs> got excited you know, about ducks. You get excited about radio <laughs> and ducks. Radio so, and ducks. Put those together. My mind's blown. Uh, Pete's trigger is a weird sort of Beatrix <laughs> Potter novelist. Um, so, I don't know, the tale of the radio host and duck or something like that. Um, anyway, um, enough of that. So what I did was, I, in that part of that webinar, I did a very tenuous joke about getting your ducks in a row. Uh, yeah. And each of these ducks, you know, you may have seen it, um, had a, uh, a factor that you should consider before launching your station. Things that you may not necessarily think about, even things that don't necessarily apply to you, but some element of it is still some worth uh, discussing. Um, so I'm just going to quickly kind of go through, again, some of those, because I feel it is relevant. You know, we've, we're, hopefully we're inspiring you with our love for radio. World Radio Day has kind of encouraged you to give this a go. So, um, so you know, some things to consider, again, may not all apply to you, but still maybe things you can take away from it. So... Uh, one of the ducks had was about presenting style, um, you know, not about, you know, how you're going to address people like, hey, 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 Phil on the radio. Hey. But, but things like, you know, are you having a focus on pre-recorded content mm-hmm. or live? I mean, the thrill of live radio. Nothing um, beats. I mean, spoiler alert, this is a pre-recorded webinar, but we're hosting it. But we're hosting it as live, you know, because there is a, you know, it doesn't matter if we make stupid jokes that we did that don't really work, you know. It's, it's, <laughs> like the glasses joke. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, the glasses I'll joke. give you another chance to do it. I'll leave them on for another minute. Uh, but the idea, we're doing it as, as live because there's a thrill of being able to do something and no take backsies, you know, in a way. So, mm. yeah, are you going to be doing live radio? Live radio is fantastic for engaging an audience, not so much in terms of the content, but you're engaging them because there is an invitation for them to be involved. You know, if you're doing something that's live, I know that if I wanted to text or email in to say, not you, you know, it doesn't have to be an opinion about something, just say, oh, I'm enjoying the show. There's a chance that that might get read out. And, you know, or if there is the opportunity to step in and talk about, um, an opinion on an album that you are bashing or or a the local politics you know the local news and i want to choose yeah. in my opinion about it there's an invitation for me to do that and you can't get that with pre-recorded content you can't do that with podcasting that's why radio i think excels more than podcasting because there is that 
opportunity for involvement. So have a think about the presenting style of, is it going, are you going to be doing live? Are you going to be doing pre-recorded? Um, and you know, if you want some tips on presenting, it's, it's a few years old now, but I did a video about you know, 20 tips to consider about when you're presenting, which you can find on our, um, uh, on our YouTube channel and our, on our blog. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's the first one about presenting style. And kind of following on to that is about show ideas as well. So, um, you know, are you revolving your entire radio station about over one show? Like your key show, every Friday night we're doing Phil's Mix, Phil's Bangers or whatever like that. Um, mm. um, and, you know, is it going to be purely about that? And then the rest of the programming over the week is fine. Or are you going to go whole hog and have programming all day, every day? You know, yeah. have a think about which one works and the first one works a lot better than people think you know if you've got a really hot idea for one particular show and you're stressing about the other 23 hours that day or the rest of the week how that's going to be filled don't stress about it i think it will happen right yeah you start filling that first show the rest will come naturally yeah. when it's time yeah and particularly when you're launching a station um you know it's easier to direct people to one location mm -hmm. at one time on one day so yeah. rather than say I'm launching my station on February 1st, March 1st, or something like that. Monday, I've got this. Tuesday, I've got this. Wednesday at 3, 4, 5. Don't do that. Just say, I'm launching my station. Friday night, 6 o'clock, I'm going to be doing that. Direct people just to that one time. Don't worry. If they enjoy the show, they'll stick around and discover what else you've got coming on your station. Or you can use that show to advertise what else. Okay, so that's enough us rambling on. I mean, we're still going to ramble on for a little bit longer, but we're, going to, but we're going to hear more from you. So as I mentioned before, we sent out a couple of questions just to really get your opinions mm. and, uh, about radio, specifically why you like it. Where do you think it's going? What do you find are the benefits of radio? Because it, again, all comes back to World Radio Day. The reason we're here is because for our love and appreciation and gratitude for radio. So instead of you asking me questions about the platform, I wanted to ask you about radio. So the first question I asked was, what does radio mean to you? So pretty open-ended and it was great to get a mixture of our responses. So the first one is from Mark and he said, uh, radio means being able to have a banquet of people um, of, with diverse origins and ideals. It gives me a chance to open up and share my world, hopefully share a message of encouragement and support. Yeah, I really like that one and uh, something we believe in. Uh, Mike got in touch and said, radio is more than just entertainment. It is a companion, a friend, a way to discover new music, ideas, and it is information and relevant. Yeah, exactly. Informative and relevant. Sorry, Mike. Yeah. So uh, again, both of those, it's just about, you know, you're giving people the space to, to come in and chat and just, yeah, it's always relevant, you know, it's always updating, it's live, you know. Yeah. Um, Franz, again, a similar vibes. Um, it brings warmth, humanness, um, shared, intimate, and personal ways to enjoy a curated live as it is broadcasted range of music, art, and culture. And Frank came back with very short but punchy, it's magic, company, education, entertainment. Exactly. That should be the new slogan for the BBC, shouldn't it? It's magic, magic. company, education, entertainment. Frank for Prime Minister. <laughs> and other sort of keywords that a lot of people used again in these answers that we uh, sort of have no doubt but things like uh, a lot of use of the word connecting, yeah. informing, uplifting, essential, and what we touched on before. So yeah, it seems the general consensus is that radio brings people together for a variety of different reasons for to share opinions, love, uh, respect and yeah, music fun. And be a companion. Yeah, it's and what it, we said yeah, earlier, right? Companion, Once yeah. again, it's, 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 it's you're the, doing something the, to help each other. It's the voice, the soundtrack that's in the corner of your room uh, as much as you needed to. Mm. Uh, another question we asked was, what's the best thing about radio? What do you in particular appreciate about radio? And uh, Mr. Bu, so apologies for, for pronouncing your name incorrectly, um, we communicate better being able to talk and debate on everything about this world. Yeah. Very, very valid. And again, opens up this whole idea of peace and, and you know, diffusing conflict through radio. Yeah, and then Perry came back w along similar lines. It encourages community engagement and outreach. Yeah. We talked about this earlier, about bringing communities, be about local, national, world, whatever it is, together, and radio does that. Yeah. Uh, Mike again said that uh, the best thing about radio for him is that radio is intrusive, mm. it's immediate and it's hard to ignore. Whether driving, at work or at home, it can transport you to a happy place. 
Yeah, and it's always there, right? Yeah. Whatever the time of day, you can switch on a radio station. It doesn't require fancy equipment, you, a TV, speaker, wind-up radio, yeah. ri- anything, it's there. It's probably the only positive use of the word intrusive as well, but it's like a good positive... It's a good way. intrusive. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the final question that, you know, that, I, that I wanted to explore was, where do you see radio going uh, in the next few years? Now, Sean said that the smartphone and digital media streaming is a game changer to anyone with aspiration or currently on air. Terrestrial radio may be losing listeners, but people still want info, opinions, sports, music and anything imaginable. There is an audience out there. Radio may take on a new face or outlet to reach you, but as long as there are people and a way to reach others, there will always be a radio station and a market to broadcast to. Yeah. Spoken like a radio broadcaster. It's spoken like us earlier (laughs) on. It's almost like he knew what we were going to say. Sean? Uh, And then Walter said, once again, (laughs) I'm just reading this. Walter also seems to know where we're talking about. Walter said, in five years, I see radio making a more triumphant return to the way people get their news and entertainment, especially during the workday. True. Uh, Radio and the internet... It, radio and internet radio especially can be taken inside the office via Wi-Fi or like on your phone. It can be taken into the classroom, the kitchen, the factory, regardless of wherever you are and the limits that normal radio gets. So like you can't get an FM radio in a steel workshop. Yeah. Um, it can be taken there. In five years, most every station, FM or otherwise, will have a stream somewhere on the internet. Yeah. I think that's happening now. I don't think we need to wait five years for that. Yeah, like, you know, a lot of a lot of terrestrial stations are making content exclusively for on-demand mm. online, or as I said, they're repurposing a lot of their radio stations. So, yeah, Walter, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely, uh, definitely happening. It's also interesting what Walter said about it. He sees it making a, a return to the way people get their news. We talked about this earlier, mm. didn't we? But we think in the UK, especially and abroad, local radio is making a comeback. It started in lockdown and it kept growing. Mm. And, and... If Walter's right in five years, probably when we want to hear news, we'll go to our local station and not the national yeah. news app we all have on yeah. our phones. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, and then obviously I touched on it before, but I, you know, my, my favourite thing about radio is that personal approach to it, you know, because yeah. radio is, is for you and no other medium can do that. I mean, pe- what, I don't think we asked you about what, what's your favourite thing about radio. What, what, what do you take away most from it? You didn't ask me, actually. Um, uh, <laughs> and that's a good point. My favourite thing about radio is, I think someone said this earlier, it's always there, yeah. where, whatever time it is. If I'm in the car, driving a long journey, or if I'm at home alone, or um, on a ho- holiday... In a hotel room. In know. a hotel room on my own, <laughs> in Manchester, watching a man on TikTok, uh, do a radio show to 7,000 people, or whether I'm on holiday abroad which I've just been it's always there so that's my favourite thing it's yeah. always there and I know it's always there yes it, there's the like, comfort of it it's, it's a comfort blanket you know it's there even if it's not the station I listen to at home when I'm abroad in a car and I'm driving listening I was in France listening to NRG I think it was mm. it's just there I got in the car it's there yeah. I didn't have to do anything I like, it was yeah, there in the past when I've gone on you know gone on uh, abroad and I've gone on some excursions and we're on a coach ride for an hour or something oh, to another yeah. part of the island or something and hearing the, the local radio you know the you know I can't understand a lick of Greek but I like the music I like the, the tone <laughs> of voice everything. you know it's, it's yeah. great for if you love radio just as much as we do or if it's just something that's you know you kind of like and you want to explore it a bit more then please get in touch you know you can do that through sending us at uh, nice no, you can send us an email uh, studio at radio.co that'll usually come through to me you know if you want to chat to Pete I'll inbox him. Um, or, you know, if you've got any questions, thoughts, or whatnot, you know, please go to, you know, the comments wherever you're watching this. Just, again, let us know uh, what you thought of this. If you've got any other questions, please let us know your thoughts about radio. You know, we asked a selection of people, uh, but there are lots of opinions that we didn't get to read. Maybe you hate radio. Maybe you think radio is going to die in yeah. the next five months, never mind five years. Let us know, you know, whatever opinions you have about the industry, radio, music, talk, whatever it is, just... Get in touch with us, just interact with us. Yeah, and we want to know. We want to know good, bad, in between, everything. And we also want to know how we can celebrate radio and, Mm. you know, do more about things like this. So let us know. Yeah, and, you know, again, let us know if you want to launch your own station and you just Mm. want to have a little... Even if you just want a quick five-minute chat about, here's an idea, Phil, what do you think of it? Get in touch, you know, uh, or go to our website, radio.co forward slash demo. Book in a video call with us and, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get the ball rolling and, yeah get you on air in no time at all. Well, thanks for having me today, Phil. You're very welcome. My work here is done. 
We've talked about radio for far too long. Going to go have a lie down and maybe watch some TikTok. Yeah, indeed. And uh, so until next time, take care and happy broadcasting. Wave, Phil. And just before you go, how would you like to launch your very own online radio station? Surprisingly, it's a lot simpler than you may think. And the absolute best way to get started is by chatting to myself or another member of the Radio.co team. To do that, just head to radio.co forward slash demo to schedule a video call with us, where we'll discuss your plans, answer your questions, and of course, guide you around the Radio.co software. So, yeah, it's a Valentine's a Valentine's Day webinar. Let's do a yeah. Valentine's webinar. Chuck drive. Oh. <laughs> How's your driving, mate? Long and hard, Phil. Long and hard. Oh, 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 oh. I know the feeling. Um, <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> right, how was the drive? Long and hard. Long and hard, Phil. Oh, better. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> Stop saying long and hard. Hey, mate. How was the drive? <laughs> <laughs> Stop! <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to do that, and it froze. You really got into it. It threw me off. Whoa! <laughs> well, Pete, guess we're chatting about World Radio Day. Oh, it might. Sorry, I shouldn't have you too much. Whoa! Oh, sorry, I forgot you were <laughs> Peace and love. Peace and film. Ha ha ha!